Friday's massive earthquake was really just the latest of many big quakes we've seen during the past year or so. Christchurch, New Zealand had a terrific one last month. It killed 166 people. There was an 8.8 .8 magnitude quake in Chile last year. All of them happened along the so-called Ring of Fire, which does also pass along the U.S. West Coast. So what are the chances that an earthquake of this magnitude could hit the U.S.? And if it does happen, would it be as damaging? Is this country prepared? Here to help us answer those questions is seismologist James Garrity from the Lamont Research Professor. He's the Lamont Research Professor, rather, at Columbia University. Good to have you with us. We showed that picture of the Ring of Fire, and we hear it talked about a lot. 90% of the world's earthquakes happen there. Uh, Japan, Chile, New Zealand. Is the U.S. West Coast next? It, we can't say that it's next, but it's certainly it's it's part of the same system. The, the, the Ring of Fire is really just a... a, a chain of very large faults mm -hmm. that are associated with the Pacific plate interacting with the plates around it. And when it pushes beneath it or when it slides along it, it tends to build up friction and produces these kinds of earthquakes. It also produces volcanoes. And so that's kind of what gives us this, this notion of a ring of fire. Okay. And I know that it's, I mean, we know you can't exactly predict an earthquake at this point, but if you were looking at the U.S. West Coast, is there a particular area which seems more vulnerable? So the, the Pacific Northwest, the, uh, what we call the Cascadia subduction zone, is a, is a fault that has uh, the same kinds of characteristics that, that the fault beneath Japan has. And so we are very worried about large subduction zone events there that, mm -hmm. can, that, that can be similar to what we saw in Japan. Which is interesting because a lot of people think West Coast earthquake, California. California absolutely has very significant earthquake risk. The San Andreas Fault is a fault more like what we had in New Zealand. And so it's just the, the, the character of the fault changes, the kinds of events that we expect to have on those faults are slightly different. California, we're not going to get a big tsunami jet producing event. Okay. Pacific Northwest, we might. We could. We could. So when you look at the possibilities of what could happen, we have heard over and over again that Japan is incredibly prepared for these events and the toll could have been far worse, even though it is terrible this morning. How prepared is the United States? We are, I, I think we're not at the same level of pre preparation of Japan. It's just not as a national problem. It, it's not something that's on the radar as much as it is in Japan. Mm -hmm. We do have very good observing systems in place. But the, the U.S. Geological Survey runs a national level network. And in, and in certain regions in California, in the Pacific Northwest, we're really building up our capabilities to both observe the kinds of events that are happening and so we can learn more from them and also start to link them together into, into the kinds of, say, early warning systems that, that we've seen that, that Japan has, has implemented. And so, so those things are really starting to be built here now. And so that's one aspect of it. But but another really important thing, building codes. We heard a lot about the buildings in the quake, which incredibly didn't suffer much damage based on this 8.9 magnitude. Are the building codes in the U.S. up to those same standards? So I think to say in general in the U.S. being up to those standards, no, we can't really say that. It, like I say, it's not really a national level problem. I mean, there are, I think, Los Angeles and San Francisco have been very, very well aware of their earthquake, earthquake mm -hmm. hazard, and they have been building buildings that, that are designed to be resistant to the types of events there. Seattle and Portland, it's really the geologic evidence for these large quakes in the Pacific Northwest has really only come about in the last, we've really only started to understand it in the last 25 or 30 years. And so they're sort of trying to catch up now. I imagine this would take a lot of time, obviously a lot of money to catch up. But given what just happened on Friday, do you think there will be uh, more impetus to do that? Will it spur some of that development? Uh, perhaps. I mean, certainly, certainly to a degree, I think, uh, like a lot of things, we respond to the most recent events. And so right now, is an opportunity to really think about what kinds of, of systems we need to put in place. The longer term issue is really how to, how do we continually maintain the investments to maintain mm -hmm. those systems and continue to operate them over the long period of time. Because it could be it could be another hundred years before these kinds of events really do strike us. We just have to be prepared for them. That and that's entire the hardest time. part. We don't know when, and it seems in some ways like a small portion of the country, but that's it could right. obviously have national yes, impact. It, it, that's right. The, the impact is so devastating that the economic impact would obviously be felt, you know, a, yeah. around the world. Really. A wake up call for so many. Thanks for being with us. James Garrity My from pleasure. Columbia University.